yet we can really open it our sample of facts. The average, however, is about 50%, and that's the value recommended by the previous organization. Uh, both men and females have to survive the various uh, age categories. The intake level is around, and that's the grand years of value So of course this is the average level. There are maybe there are maybe individuals uh, whose intakes may be greater than 10% of the total. Now with transplants, we are not doing really well, at least in the mid 1990s. That is adapted as health Canada. I've indicated that we more or less intake close to about 8.4 grams of trans fat per day. That's about 3.7% of the total illness. Compared to the uh, literature data for other countries on trans fat, you see that we are the highest consumers of trans fat in the world. That was in 1991. So, Health took some steps to reduce the trans in Canadian foods. First one was introduced in 2003 where Health Canada introduced mandatory trans fat labeling. So now uh, when you go and buy some prepackaged foods, you will see a light for the trans content. So this had some effects. For two reasons, you know, the uh, food manufacturers, they try to reduce the trans content in their food products as well as consumers had some idea about trans fat. They knew that this is not a good fat to have, so they were able to select foods that are low in trans fat. So with this piece of legislation, uh, the total trans content in the average uh, Canadian diet reduced from about 8.4 to about 4 grams per day. And we were not happy with that piece of legislation. So Health Canada appointed the uh, task force of trans fatty acids and they came up with two recommendations. One was to reduce the trans content in vegetable oils and some margarines to less than 2% of total fat. And for all the other foods, the trans content should be less than 5%. So the industry was given two years to follow those two recommendations. And the final will be Final data, of course, we'll be looking at the following the industry very closely to try to see whether they are really following these recommendations. And in a few months, the time we might come up with a uh, piece of legislature. Uh, we may ban the trans uh, uh, products in Canada, or if we are happy with the industry uh, progress, we will just go to go into this uh, case. So, anyway, <coughs> margarines were a source of trans fat in the Canadian diet particularly in the uh, early 80s and in the 90s. Now, the food manufacturers, the margarine manufacturers, they took the responsibility and they have now, if you had the margarine produced in 1989, only 3% of the margarines that were sold at that time contained less than 2% of products. And then, gradually you could see most of the margarines, or the margarine manufacturers, they provided the Canadian consumers with better margins, containing lower marks of trans, less than these. So of course the current margins are free of trans and also they're providing you know excellent fatty acid profile, low in saturated fats, as well as low in uh, high in monounsaturated and polyunsaturated. Now <clears throat> still we have problems with these hard margins. Those are the print margins. Margarines that you know wrapped in uh, oil papers. They are cheaper margarines, but still they contain extremely high levels of trans fat. Now, <coughs> fast foods, they were another source of trans fat in the Canadian diet, particularly French fries, because they were using. Partially hydrated vegetable oils and the large levels of trans fats for preparing their foods, you know, like macros, uh, A and W, Harvey's, etc. So in 2006, 
The average transplanted in French fries sold in Canada was about 29. Now it's less than 20. Mm -hmm. Not only they reduce the transplanted in the Canadian uh, fast foods, but also they reduce the uh, saturated fat content and most of the uh, French fries, uh, the fat in the French fries, uh, providing a really nutritionally uh, friendly, I would say, fatty acid profile. They're low in saturated, low in trans, as well as they're highly monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fatty acids. And all the other foods sold in these fast foods, they're also low in trans, uh, fat. These are the biggest types of chicken products chicken nuts, uh, fish product, uh, miscellaneous uh, foods, and on the rings, And various foods sold in grocery stores. They were, you know, sources of trans fat in the Canadian diet, but not in the uh, Canada find any bread and but now containing trans fat. Uh, Muffins, crackers, cookies, uh, etc. And then, there are still food items that are high in trans, particularly jordans and garlic bread. A lot of people like to have garlic bread. Garlic is good, but the rest of the uh, ingredients in that garlic bread is not so good. You know, contain either large levels of trans or saturated fats. Same with garlic bread, chocolate, uh, as well as frozen uh, pieces. These are uh, sold in uh, fast food restaurants are okay, but not the person uh, pieces. So here are some take home messages. So to minimize your risk of adverse health effects related to trans fat and saturated fats. So choose low fat dairy products because dairy products are source of a lot of trans uh, saturated fats. Choose leader meats and make sure that you read the labels on prepackaged foods and look for the levels of saturated and trans fats. Choose foods that, foods that are labeled as being free or low in trans and saturated fats. Most of the Asians, you know, like to strike This is not a really good practice. And if you want to fry foods, use oil, uh, <coughs> use healthy oil. That can be a high proportion of hormones such as, uh, such as olive oil or cannabis oil. And how you can you try foods, you know, do not use the same oil for more than two or three times because if you use for more than three times, you are going to create some oxidized material boost to the carcinogen. So I have been talking about all the time, you know, that let's get on with the Fat. Well, yeah, I mentioned that there are two series of uh, polyunsaturates. One is called the omega-6 and omega-3. I'm sure most of you have heard about the omega-3. Uh, these are essential for humans, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, we cannot synthesize them by ourselves. So we have to get them from the uh, diet. And they are available from both plant and animal sources. Earlier I mentioned that these could regulate many physiological functions. Deficiencies of these omega-6 and omega-3 will create a lot of problems. I am not going to read them. So, here. Now, if you and that, if you are WHO recently recommended that the omega-6 content in the uh, average human diet should be between 2.5 to 9% of the total energy. That's about 5.5 uh, to 20 grams, and omega-3 should be 0 0.5 to 2 percent, 1.1 grams per day, 0.4 grams per day. From this one, we could see that omega-3 is more important, particularly in the prevention of chronic heart disease. 